no more. No more. No more excuses. No more, I'll start tomorrow. No more, just this one time. No more accepting the shortfalls of my own will. No more taking the easy road. No more bowing down to whatever unhealthy or unproductive thoughts that float through my mind. No. No more. Everything worthwhile is uphill. You see, every dream that you've ever had, it's, it's all uphill. If you have a great relationship with somebody, you. You had to work on it. it. It's uphill. If you build a wonderful business, guess what? It was uphill. If, if you've made the right decisions, they're, they're not easy, are they? It, it, it's uphill. And the only way that you can go uphill is to be intentional. Nobody ever accidentally went uphill. You've never talked to a successful person and said, how did you get to the top of the mountain? And then look at you and say, I have no idea. If they're at the top of the mountain, they know how they got there because they had to have effort. It took energy, it took time. Everything worthwhile, everything worthwhile is uphill. Life is always giving you a test, trying to give you a way out, trying to give you an excuse not to show up. This is my excuse today. But guess what? You gotta have the mentality to show up every day of your life. No matter what life throws at you, I don't care what you're going through, what life's throwing at you. It's your responsibility to find your new 100%. People always say, you gotta love the work. You gotta love what you do. You don't have to love what you do. You gotta be addicted to what you do. You gotta be addicted to winning. You cannot work short hours. You gotta work long hours. You gotta work smarter and you gotta work harder. It's the work that you put in, the time and effort, the dedication, the hours that nobody else saw here, the sacrifices. You have to be disciplined. You have to be obsessive. You have to be addicted to the result. The bigger your dream is, the harder to grind. You might have small beginnings. You might not have a lot of money. You might not have a lot of resources, but there's no excuse. And I need you to understand that the bigger your dream is, the earlier you're going to have to get up. The longer you're going to have to stay up. The more effort you're going to have to put in. You have to fight for it every day. You have to climb for it every day. Does it come to you? It's not in three easy packages, and it's not the cure to overnight success. And the only way that you go uphill is by self-discipline. So listen to me very carefully. It's an impossible for you to have continuous success without having self-discipline in your life. Now, self-discipline enables you to go uphill. You can't go uphill without self-discipline. Nobody will carry you uphill. Nobody can coach you uphill. Nobody can push you uphill. If you go uphill, you got to do it yourself. Most people know what they need to do, but very few actually do it. We spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to get better and way less time actually doing the work. It all comes down to how much you want it. Most people know what they want, but very few people want it bad enough to actually do something about it. So on the days where you don't feel like showing up, are you the kind of person to push past and keep going? Or are you the one looking for an excuse to take a break? If you're going to try, go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. If you're going to try, go all the way. This could mean losing girlfriends, wives, relatives, jobs, and maybe your mind. Go all the way. Isolation is the gift. All the others are a test of your endurance, or how much you really want to do it. And you'll do it, despite rejection and the worst odds. If you're going to try, go all the way. You're not all you could be, and there's pain in that. And there's the necessity for a certain amount of judgment about that, and even a certain amount of exclusion, because what you are that is insufficient, in some sense, should be not be allowed to propagate further. But, you know, here's some things about you that are virtuous and good, and they're pretty powerful, actually. And if you just made those more manifest, you could dispense with a lot of this immaturity and misery, and you could start walking this pathway that makes things better and the thing is that as soon as you 
start walking the pathway that makes things better, then things immediately become better because your whole orientation changes. And you know, if you're in a bad place, but you're escaping, that's pretty positive. I don't wait for the perfect moment. Usually the perfect moment is now. The right time to tell somebody that you love, that you love them when you feel it is right now. The right time to make that contact right now. So I want to challenge you today. That call you need to make, make it now. That email you need to send, send it now. That chapter you need to write, that copy, that funnel, do it now. I love knocking things off the list because that creates momentum. And the more you do this, ironically, you will develop confidence in yourself to be able to attack things in the moment. Commit means to make it happen no matter what. See, when you make a commitment, I'm going to become wealthy. When you make it important, when you decide I'm going to do it no matter what, life changes for you. See, most people don't keep their commitments to their commitments. That's why they lead lives of poverty, lives of misery, lives of unhappiness. Sometimes it's about consistency. Just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And never stop and never give up and never quit. We all get what we tolerate in ourselves and other people. But when you're no longer willing to tolerate something, that's when your life changes. The difference in people is their standards, period. When you look at some of the most successful high performers, it might be tempting to say that they were born this way. They're talented, end of story. In fact, talent, while undeniably making life easier, is but one part of the equation I used to be a shy and fearful person. However, my apparent misfortune turned out to be a source of strength because it provided a spark to introduce big changes in my life. By continuously pushing my comfort zone, I not only overcame social shyness and improved my communication skills, but also developed high self-confidence and overcame other fears in my life. I might not have been born with the talent to be a people person. I still prefer solitude to crowds, but with self-discipline and consistent work, I still achieved astounding results. Next time, before you complain that you don't have a talent for something or weren't born this way, remind yourself that self-discipline in many situations can more than make up for a lack of inborn traits. Life's easy when you live it the hard way and hard if you try to live it the easy way. Self, discipline means living your life the hard way, resisting temptations and instant gratification in order to receive bigger and better rewards in the future. It's certainly easier to avoid all kinds of discomfort and indulge yourself whenever you want, but in the end, all that you get from that approach is fleeting pleasure now at the expense of your future, which otherwise could have been much better. Consider a week willed person who, when faced with a challenge, immediately opt out. How likely is this person to achieve anything substantial in life if their primary value is to feel comfortable? How is this person going to manage a crisis that they must face? Even a relatively insignificant problem can become an insurmountable obstacle for a person who's been living a sheltered life and always avoided what's difficult or disagreeable. Now, Contrast that with a person who voluntarily makes his or her life harder. They seek out and welcome challenges as opportunities to grow. Each self-imposed affliction strengthens them so that fewer and fewer difficulties in life overwhelm them. Day by day, they immunize themselves against problems precisely because they seek them out. When life deals them an unexpected blow, they're ready to handle it because thanks to living their lives the hard way, they're always ready for hardships. Your choices are made in a moment, but their consequences will transcend a lifetime. Humans have the capacity to act against their urges in exchange for a better future. Unfortunately, many people live by the principle of if it feels good, do it. And if it doesn't, don't do it. Caving into your temptations whenever you feel them emerge is like relinquishing your humanity in a way. As an intelligent human being, you have an ability, and I dare say an obligation, to make decisions that are based on rational thinking, not on your instincts alone. Strive to be a better human and embrace your humanity 
by exercising your willpower muscle instead of succumbing to your most primal and least helpful for your long-term goals. Part of the brain, your most primal instincts may provide temporary comfort, but seldom are good for the long-term, except when there is a direct threat to your survival. If you study a subject every day for one hour a day, five days a week, in five years, you will become an expert in that area. Some things simply have to be done every day. You know the old saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, eating seven apples all at once isn't going to give you the same benefit. If you want to improve, intentional growth needs to be a habit. A habit is something I do continually, not once in a while. Motivation may get you going, but the positive habits you develop and practice consistently are what keep you improving. As I have worked to improve on a day, by day basis, two words have helped me to stay on track. The first is intention. Every morning as I start my day, I intend to learn something that day. This develops a mindset in me to look for things that will help me improve. The other word is contemplation. Time alone is an essential for self-improvement. When I spend time thinking about my challenges, experiences, and observations, it allows me to gain perspective. I can evaluate any losses, and I can learn from them. Contemplation time by myself also gives me time to do positive self-talk. Motivational humorist Or Walker stated, The most important words you will ever utter are those words we say to ourselves about ourselves when we are by ourselves. During these conversations, we can beat ourselves up and make ourselves feel really small, or we can learn and build ourselves up so that we become better. If you want to spend some time each day try to improve yourself, you might want to begin by asking yourself three questions at the end of the day, as I do. They are, What did I learn today? What spoke both to my heart and my head? How did I grow today? What touched my heart and affected my actions? What will I do differently? Unless I can state specifically what I plan to do differently, I won't learn anything. One of the things I don't do is compare myself to others during that time. There's a reason for that. My desire is to not become superior to anybody else. I only want to be superior to my former self. Intention and contemplation assist me in doing that. Make improvement intentional improvement is within the reach of anyone, no matter how experienced or green, educated or ignorant, rich or poor. To start improving today, do these three things. Decide you are worth improving to improve yourself. You must believe you can improve. Author Dennis Whitley has a wonderful definition for personal development. He says that it is the conviction that there is value in your dreams. Personal development, he says, is the belief that you are worth the effort, time, and energy needed to develop yourself. It gives you permission to invest in yourself so you can develop your own potential. You can invest in yourself. You don't need anyone's dreams but your own. And you don't need to become anyone other than yourself at your best. The great philosopher Thomas Carlyle once wrote, let each become all that he was created capable of being. I can't think of a better definition of success. Life challenges us every day to develop our capabilities to the fullest. We're successful when we reach for the highest. That's within us. When we give the best we have, life doesn't require us to always come out on top. It asks only that we do our best to improve at whatever level of experience we are currently on. Pick an area to improve. You will have plenty of time to improve other areas of your life. Focus on the one now that makes the most of your strengths and is closest to your sense of purpose. I'm suggesting you to spend an hour a day improving in that area. Then take it slow but steady. We always overestimate what we can get done in a day or a week, but we underestimate what we can get done in a year. Just imagine what you will be able to get done in five years. Find opportunities to improve in the wake of your losses. Focused, strategic improvement is important to success. But so is learning from our losses as they come. However, let me say this. Some lessons in life cannot wait. You must make the most of them when they occur. If you don't examine what went wrong while the details are fresh, you may lose the ability to learn the lesson. Besides, if you neglect to learn the lesson immediately, you may experience the loss again. Business professor George Knox said, when you cease to be better, you cease to be good. When you stop growing, you cease to be useful. 
a weed in the garden of prosperity. We are what we are today because we were what we were yesterday, and our thoughts today determine our actions tomorrow. Those who learn from their losses give themselves that permission. As your friend, I give it to you also. Knowledge may come from study, but wisdom comes from learning and improving in the wake of your mistakes. I always try to remember that I am a work in progress. When I maintain that perspective, I realize that I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to have it all together. I don't need to try to have all the answers, and I don't need to learn everything in a day. When I make a mistake, it's not because I'm a failure or worthless. I just didn't do something right because I still haven't improved enough in some part of the process, and that motivates me to keep growing and improving. If I don't know something, it's an opportunity to try to improve in a new area. I'm in it for the long haul. I try to be like industrialist Ian McGregor, who said, I work on the same principle as people who train horses. You start with low fences, easily achieved goals, and work up. When I got started, my fences were embarrassingly low, but in time I was able to raise them. Today, I'm still raising them little by little. That's the only way I know how to keep improving. And I always want to keep doing that because improvement is the focus of learning.